Mr. Brown. Howdy, Bert. Ben. Another hot day? That sure is. Yeah. Hello, Hoss. Hi, Bert. Good problem. Well, they sure are. I'll put them on your bill. Bert, you put them on Hoss's personal bill. Say, <laughs> so I got a long list of supplies here I'd like you to put together for us. I said leave me alone. Some of that sweet wine, Bert. Doctor said take a little with my meals. Out of the brand you like, Luke. Maybe later today we'll have some in. Luke. Honey, you heard what he said. Look, you can come back later. I don't want no woman telling me what to do. Who do you think you're fooling? You think I haven't got any eyes? I'll get her myself. Oh, wait a minute, Luke. You stay out of there. Luke? Uh, us and I are just going out to have some breakfast. Why don't you come along with us? Uh, you, Cartwright, stay out of this. I don't like you. I never did. Well, you ain't going to put up with us, Luke. You get out of here and stay out of here. Luke, honey, please stop. I don't want you to get hurt. No stinking storekeeper's going to tell me what to do. You high and mighty Cartwrights. You don't mean nothing to me. Luke, honey, please stop. I've always wanted to kill me a Cartwright. this happen? I'm afraid it's too late for a doctor. Luke's been drinking for a week straight, Sheriff. He plumb one out of his head. There wasn't nothing Ben could do. Luke Grayson's been heading for this for a long time. Maybe so. A miserable end for a man like Luke Grayson once was. You had to do this, didn't you, Ben Cartwright? You had to kill him. Well, Todd, this is the end of our long journey. Virginia City. Doesn't look like either of us are going to get much of a welcome. But Paul must have got my letter. I wrote him right after he sent me the money for the fare. Time's pretty valuable to a man as rich and important as you say your pa is. He probably left word for you. Let's ask around. Well, that's the thing to do. I, I, I want to thank you anyway for looking out for me the way you have. No. Agent? Yes, sir? You know a man called Luke Grayson? Sure, who don't? Well, he was supposed to meet this stage. Well, now, he ain't going to meet this stage or any other. You'll find him over yonder. You don't mean he's dead? Well, now, Ab Jenkins ain't buried alive one recently. However, I think the townspeople would have been willing to make an exception in this case. No. No, he can't be dead. Can't be dead. Isn't that terrible? That boy came all the way from Boston to see his father. Father? Is that Luke's kid? 
Are you sure there's nothing more Hassan I can do? Appears to me you've done too much already. I don't like the way you said that, Mr. Jenkins. Everybody knows it was either Paul or Luke. You know that ain't what I mean, Haas. I was referring to all the expense, paying for the best funeral. The sheriff has a special fund to foot that kind of bill. Yeah. The sheriff didn't gun Luke down, I did. We'll see you at the services. Thank you. Luke Grayson? I'm afraid so. Not the way I remember him. It's not the way at all. How did he die? I'm afraid this ain't the time or the place. Look, mister, I've got a right to know he was my father. Todd. Todd Grayson. I'd have known you anywhere. It's all Luke talked about the last few days. If there's ever anything I can do... What do you know about him? I'm Diane Jordan. Luke and I were... Your father and I... Well, he must have written you about me. How did he die? Now, look, son. This is no time to be talking about things like this. Isn't it? Why isn't it? I'll have to know the truth sooner or later. Your father was murdered. Shot down in cold blood by a man named Ben Cartwright. Now, you know better than that, Diane. Son, this ain't the same as back east. When a man draws a gun on another man... Ben Cartwright. Why did he want to kill my father? If you're Ben Cartwright, you don't have to have an excuse to kill a man. But... Diane, I won't have this talk. Now, look. Boy... You come with me a minute. It's your father's gun. Take a good look. It'll show he fired twice. There was no way back after that. He fired even before Ben Cartwright drew. My father's gun. He wore it proudly. It was a famous gun once. Uh, son, the gun, I think I ought to turn that over to the sheriff. Why? It was Luke's gun, wasn't it? Well, yes, yeah, sure, but... Then it should go to the boy. Everything Luke left should go to the boy. Your father left some other things over at my place, with me. I know he'd want you to have them. Nor is it for us to condemn the victor, even while we mourn the fallen. We can only hope that the soul of Luke Grayson shall achieve in the everlasting life beyond the forgiveness and peace denied him on this earth. Let us pray. You better say one for yourself, Mr. Cartwright. It's going to be your last. You murdered my father. Now they're going to bury you along with him. Don't be a fool, boy. Put up your gun. When I'm finished with it. Son, this is your last warning. You might get off the first shot, but I'll get off the second. Oh, the sheriff. He's just a scared kid now. Sure, I'm scared. But that's not going to stop me. Todd, for your own sake, listen to me. It was no murder. Ben Cartwright did everything he could to avoid bloodshed. You keep out of this. It isn't your fight. It doesn't have to be anybody's fight, son. If I'd done what you think, do you believe I'd be a free man today? Oh, I've heard all about you, Cartwrights. You can even buy your way out of murder, but not this time. Wait! Let me go! I'll kill him! I'll kill him! <laughs> it's all right. It's all gonna be all right, just the way I promised your father. I don't want any favors from anyone. It's all right, Todd. Your father was that way, too. 
He wasn't the sort of man to ask anyone for a favor either. You put him there, Ben Cartwright. Think of that when you try to sleep tonight. I've addressed a complaint to Judge Parker in Eureka. He should be there by the first of the month, and he can head straight back. Well, that's fine. That should only take about three weeks. Now, what happens to the boy till then? Well, I reckon the taxpayers can stand the expense of another border. Now, hang it all, Roy. You can't keep that boy behind bars. He's not a criminal. He's a 16-year-old kid. With a 16-year-old gun. Ben, do you realize that if that kid was just a split second sooner, you wouldn't be around to watch either one of them grow any older? That's right, Paul. Sidewinder is just as poisonous today he's as he is when he's full grown. Well, we're not talking about sidewinders. We're talking about a boy. Besides, things of this one have already been pulled. And I am to see that he don't get a chance to grow another set. Least ways until the circuit judge decides what happens to him next. Mm. A lot of things can happen till then. But not with the boy in here. Eat himself up with grief and all. It's just no good, Roy. What do you want me to do? Take him by the hand and tell him that nice little boys just don't go out and murder their owners and turn them loose? I've come for the boy. The boy? Hold on, Diane. He's my responsibility, isn't he? Who else is going to look after him? He was Luke Grayson's son. And I'm the only one around here that cared anything about Luke Grayson, so that gives me a right to the boy. Diane, it's not a matter of who the boy's father is. It's just that, well, he's upset and he's kind of dangerous when he feels this way. Well, I could take care of him, Sheriff. I could give him a home. Where? In the saloon? Roy, please. You stay out of this, Cartwright. I don't care what you all think about me, but... The boy has to have someone. Don't you understand that? He needs someone. I'm sorry, Diane, but I just can't turn him over to you. Well, could I see him? Well, of course. That's perfectly all right. Right over here. Todd. What do you want? Well, I, I brought you these things. They were your father's. Gold watch and chain. Remember this? Three silver dollars. That's all he had. But there must have been more. He wrote me. Oh. What exactly did he tell you, Todd? When I got here, he'd buy a horse for me, and, and I'd help him build a house, and, and together we'd, we'd start a ranch. Yes, I know. How would you know? He never would have showed you any letters he wrote to me. No, that's right, he wouldn't. Besides, he never would have sent for me on a $3 promise. He wasn't that kind of a man. Well, he's gone now. It doesn't matter. It does to me. And it would to you, too, if you ever meant anything at all to him. Well, I don't know what I meant to him. But I certainly know what he meant to me. Ben. Is there something I could do to help with the boy? What's the matter, Cartwright? Looking for something to ease your conscience? Oh, Diane, you know better than that. Paul's just trying to... I don't care what he's trying to do. How can he know what I must feel? How can any of you Cartwrights know anything about feelings? You've got everything you want. There isn't any room in your life for anything like feelings. Sheriff, I'm not going to leave that boy in that jail cell. Ben, no, I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong. You don't owe that kid any favors. What makes you so sure the favor would be for him? Roy, both of us, we've been around a pretty long time, but not so long that we can take a man's life and just forget it, whether the man needed killing or not. 
I know, Ben. Now, I don't like keeping that kid in jail any more than you do, but what do you expect me to do with him? Turn him over to Diane? No. No, turn him over to me. To you? Paul, you forgetting what that boy tried to do to you out at the cemetery? Hoss, he's a scared little boy who traveled 3,000 miles for what? For a funeral. He's hurt, he's confused, he's, he's alone. If somebody doesn't straighten him out now, he'll wind up like his father or worse. And then somebody else will have blood in his hands. Well, Paul, if, if we do take him, what are we going to do with him? Take him out to the Ponderosa. Show him what fresh air feels like. Give him a horse, teach him how to ride. Don't you think I know what to do with boys? Oh, sure you do, Paul, but, but this boy wants to kill you. He thinks he wants to kill me. But if he stays locked up like a criminal, he'll be sure of it. Now, Roy, please believe me, I know what's best. Ben, I have all the respect in the world for your judgment. I think you're wrong. But if I do turn him over to you, you're going to have to be responsible for him all the way. I'm perfectly willing to accept that. Boy, he's going to be a mighty big handful. Adam and little Joe both going out on a roundup. Well, we'll be able to manage him. But it's only a parole, nothing more. And if he steps out of line just one time, you're duty-bound to turn him back to me now. You understand that? I understand perfectly. There'll be no trouble. Paul, I sure hope you know what you're doing. So do I. Mind if I join you? Don't you believe in knocking? Oh, that depends. Your kind never does. Now, just what is my kind? I've seen you in every mining camp and every tank town honky-tonk between here and Mexico. Maybe not the same face or the same fancy duds, but the same cold eyes, same way of walking, and the same stink of killing on you. Well, now that we understand each other, I'll have that drink. A nice place you've got here. Fine taste in furniture. Now, um, you didn't come here just to talk about my taste in furniture. And don't be too sure about that. Let's just call this a sort of uh, social visit. <laughs> People like you and me, we never get enough chance to talk. Nobody much cares what we think or how we feel. Feelings? Can't afford them. Not anymore. No? Then what's this still around for? Give it to me. It's all I have left of him. That. And the boy? He's on your mind whether you like it or not. He's nothing to me anymore. Now that I know he's in good hands. The hands that killed his father. That kid's got spunk. How long do you think he'll take what Ben Cartwright dishes out? Come on, admit it. Sooner or later, he'll make us play. Then he'll get himself killed then or hanged later. What can I do about it? He won't talk to me. Maybe he doesn't have to. Maybe he already has. What do you mean by that? I was at the funeral. He tried to kill Ben Cartwright, and you didn't try to stop him. Well, I'm not responsible for what he tried to do. Maybe not. But you were hoping the boy would pull the trigger. Or weren't you? Well, how do you expect me to feel? After all, his father and I were... We're in love? That's very touching, but a little out of my line. I'm talking about killing Ben Cartwright. You'd kill Ben Cartwright? For a price? For a price I could kill most anybody. What makes you think I've got the money? Well, not you, maybe. I was thinking of the kid. On the way out here, he told me about his father. That boy's gonna fall into quite an inheritance. I haven't sunk that low. Anyway, even if I wanted Ben Cartwright dead, I'd never hire a two-bit gun like you. No, I guess you wouldn't. You can let the boy do it for you. Wear something pretty when you go up to prison to see him. Think it over. I'll be around if you need me.
prettiest bunch of trees you ever seen, Todd. You ever been to Boston? No, can't say as I have. How do you know they don't have prettier trees there? Well, you got something there. Never thought of it, I reckon. Guess there are lots of things you never thought of. Yeah. Yep, I reckon you're right at that, too. What about that horse? You think you can ride him? What's so hard about riding a horse? Come on. Yes, sir. There's a whole lot more to being a cowboy than just smelling like one or wearing boots. Uh, for instance, you always get up on the left-hand side of a horse. And you walk up to him real easy like so you don't spook him. Go and try it. Go on. Left side. Doggone it, boy. When are you going to get it through that ornery head of yours? We're trying to help you. Help me? You you think I want to ride that sweaty old bag of bones? I don't give a hoot whether you want to or not. You're going to. You think you can make me? You dead gum Tommy Tootin, I can. Hey, 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 what's going on? Oh, I don't know. I've tried my best with this boy. I can't seem to do nothing to please him. Huh? That seems to be the trouble, son. Look, I came out here because the sheriff made me. That doesn't mean I have to like it. Now, look, Todd, when you're here in the Ponderosa, you're here as a guest, not as a prisoner. Can you try to remember that? Howdy, Ben. Oz. All right, good to see you. How are things in town, Sheriff? Fred to Midland. How are you getting along with young Todd here? Oh, just fine, Roy, just fine. Everything's going fine. Gonna make a rancher out of him yet, aren't we, Todd? Ben, uh, I've been thinking, maybe I overstepped my bounds in letting you take that boy. Well, I said I'd assume full responsibility. Yeah, but just the same, technically, you're still in my custody. Where are you figuring on sleeping in? Well, most of the hands are out with Adam and little Joe and Roundup. I figured I'd give them the foreman's room there so he could have a place of his own. Mm-hmm. Seems solid enough, except for that wind in the back. You can see that from your room, though, can't you? Now, wait a minute, Roy. This is a boy's room. It's not a jail cell. Not as far as I'm concerned. And Ben, put a lock on that door after the kid goes to bed tonight, you hear? Well, I'll be heading back to town. Roy, we got supper on the table in there. Won't you stay and eat with us? I wish I could, Hoss, but I got to get back. Sorry we're late, Paul, but Todd here couldn't quite make up his mind whether he wanted to eat or not. Well, believe me, Todd, I never had any trouble like that with Haas when he was your age. Not since, either. Mmm. You know something, Haas? This beef is about the tastiest we've ever had. Mm. The gravy looks good, too. Now, there's no sense in this, boy. I know you're hungry. Why don't you sit down and eat? Do you think I'd eat at the same table with a man that killed my father? Todd, we're just trying to help you. Can't you understand that, boy? Don't do me any favors. Now, look, I'm not afraid of you or any other Cartwright, and I'm not going to take orders from you either. Now, I, I said I wasn't going to eat at this table, and I won't. Don't let him spoil your supper, boy. You done all you could. Boy's been through a pretty rough day, Hoss. Probably hasn't eaten since breakfast, maybe even longer. Made up his mind to hate everything about this place. Starting with us. He didn't exactly choose to come here. Look at it another way. I suppose I'd been the one who'd been gunned down. How'd you feel about breaking bread with Luke Grayson? Yeah. I reckon I never looked at it like that, Paul. Hoss, take this supper out to the bunkhouse. 
always got to eat. Yes, sir. Don't be surprised if I come back with a finger bit off. Paul thought you might change your mind about supper. I'll bring you something to eat. Well, you can take it right back to him. I said I don't want anything from you, Cartwrights. Look, Todd, I don't care how mad a man gets about something. His stomach goes right on needing something to eat. You think you can make me eat that? No. No, I can't. And I wouldn't want to make you eat it. But if Paul thought you was down here hungry and there wasn't no food here for you, he'd feel real bad about it. Your father didn't care anything about me. Todd, what makes you say that? What makes me say it? Because it's the truth, that's why. Ben Cartwright's a liar. Now, you listen here, boy. No, you listen. You must think I'm two years old or something. You and all your talk about, about teaching me to ride. Well, I don't want to ride, see? And I've had just about enough of your father's talk about me being a guest here. Todd, he meant that. You are a guest here as far as we're concerned. Oh, am I? I suppose you put locks on the doors of all your guests. There's your supper. You can take that back to him and tell him I'm sick of his kind of favors. Todd, what is this? 
I guess you know what it is. Todd, listen to me. Come Todd. any closer. Don't come any closer. Don't come any closer. Todd, give me the gun. No, no! gun out of the desk drawer. Tried to kill me. Tried to kill you? A little varmint? Where is he? Outside somewhere. Probably hiding like a scared animal waiting for you and me and a dozen other grown men to come chasing after him. Paul, you, you ain't gonna just let him go, are you? No, I'm not gonna let him go. I'm not gonna go running after him either. Paul, he tried to kill you. With an empty gun. Yeah, but Paul, he didn't know it was empty. Dad, burn it. How far does your obligation go with this? Boss, boy? please. Please, nothing, boy. After all you'd done for that boy, you gave him a home. You... The least I could do after what I did to him? Sheriff Roy Coffey. I have to think of his position. Regardless of what I think, I ain't... I'm gonna have to tell Roy what happened. Probably stole one of our horses and halfway to San Francisco by now. How far do you think he could get? You saw the way he rode, didn't you? Yeah, but I got a sneaking hunch he wasn't doing his best, neither. Well, probably try to find his way back to Virginia City. If he did, we'll, we'll find him there. I'm not going to run after him. Not tonight, anyhow. Let's try to get some rest. We'll go see the sheriff first thing in the morning. It's getting late, honey. Why don't you go to bed? Go to bed? I haven't slept since he died. You gotta go on living, kid. Yeah. That's just the trouble. Living and thinking. Look at nothing but this day and night. You really loved him, didn't you? Sure. Funny, isn't it, Charlie? Me falling in love with a guy like Luke Grayson. Really wasn't much, huh? Couldn't keep a job. Always getting in fights. Always getting drunk. Half the time he didn't even know I was alive. Funny, isn't it, Charlie? You're not laughing. Nope. I ain't laughing. Remember how he was? When he'd walk down the street, all the women would get mad that they'd met their own husbands. I was just like him. My eyes would follow him wherever he went. He was so, so tall and straight. And, and that smile that He was like that to me until the day he died. You want another drink, kid? Yeah, I guess so. Better than trying to get to sleep. Thanks.
Are you open for business? Sure, I'm open for business. What can I do for you? I want to buy a gun. Guns cost money, boy. I've got money. It's not much. It's three dollars, but that ought to buy a gun of some kind. I don't have a gun I can let go for three dollars. Look, mister, any gun, an old one. Maybe you've got something here, somebody left on a bill or something like that. Son, you might as well know. I wouldn't send a gun to Luke Grayson's boy for three dollars or three thousand dollars, and nobody else in town would either. Now just run along and forget it. Good night, Charlie. Todd, what are you doing here? Mind your own business. Leave me alone. Todd, you're in trouble. What's happened? I tried to kill Ben Cartwright. Oh, Todd, they'll catch you. They'll put you in jail. I don't care what they do to me. Well, we can't stand here talking like this. Someone will see us. Here, come with me. Ben, it's just bad seed. I knew Luke Grayson when he amounted to something, but he still had that bad streak in him. The boy's got it now just the same as the old man had. You got any idea which way he headed? Well, he came this way as close as we could figure. Well, I'll get a couple of deputies. I'd like to have you come along, Hoss. Ben? I might as well get started. Good. Bert! What happened to you? Uh, Luke Grayson's kid came in the store and wanted to buy a gun. I refused to sell it to him. When I turned around, he hit me on the head with an axe handle. Don't you think you better have a doctor take a look at you? Well, I don't know. Kind of stunned me for a minute. I kept seeing the kid taking the gun. I couldn't make my legs work quick enough to stop him. He took a gun? That's right. Six shooter and some shells. He knew what he was doing. Ben, you better take him up to doctor. Hoss will go along with me. All right. And Ben, it's not just a 16-year-old boy we're dealing with. It's Luke Grayson's kid, and he's got a loaded gun. All right, boy. I asked you, where did you get that gun? I told you, I just got it, that's all. Now that you've got it, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to kill Ben Cartwright. What do you think I'm going to do with it? Now listen to me. I want him dead just as much as you do. But what chance do you think a kid like you'll have against all those grown men? All I need is just one clear shot. Don't you realize that they'll cut you to ribbons the minute you walk outside this room? Todd, what are you going to do? I'm getting out of here. No, Todd, wait. There's another way. What are you talking about? If I help you, will you promise me that you'll leave Virginia City and never come back here again? How can you help me? This is 
a draft on the First City Bank of San Francisco. Five hundred dollars. If I sign it, it'll be payable to bearer. Five hundred dollars. Then I was right. Right about what? This is my father's money. You were holding out on me. Holding out on you? Todd, I'm just trying to help you. Look, if my father gave you this, you keep it. I don't even want to hear about it. Maybe you don't need a kid. But I do. You won't need that gun. I'm on your side. Right, Diane? What are you doing here? I told you I'd be here when you needed me. I think you do now. And I know you stole that gun. So does the sheriff, and he's coming to get you. I've got to get him out of here. Get him to San Francisco. Do you think you could do it? I can do it for $500. You see, I was listening outside your door. Now, that's not socially correct, maybe, but it's a way to find things out. Now, you just sign it, and I'll get the kid out of town. There's only one thing. You mustn't cash it until you get to San Francisco. Sure, I'm in no hurry. What are you doing? I don't want anything from you. Look, my father wouldn't have anything to do with a woman like you. Now, look, boy. You do as you're told, or I'll let the sheriff have you. Cash that for me. Five hundred dollars. That's a lot of money. You've got that much in the till. Just go ahead and cash it. I've, I've never seen anything quite like this before. Mr. Cartwright. Yes, Charlie. Would you take a look at this for me? Yes. What is it? It's a bank draft. You know about these things. I wish you'd look it over. He doesn't have to look it over. It's good. It's got Diane Jordan's signature on it. Why don't she give you this? I don't think that's any of your business, Cartwright. This has something to do with Todd, doesn't it? What's the matter, Cartwright? Can't you hear good? Where's the boy? You've got my money. I said, where's the boy? I don't like people touching me. And I don't like them grabbing my money. If this is yours, legitimately. You'll get it back. But not until I've talked to Diane about this. Door's open. I think this belongs to you. Where did you get that? From that two-bit gunman who's been hanging around town. He tried to cash it downstairs. He tried to cash it? Well, what business is it of yours? Maybe I owed it to him. Maybe he did me a favor once. Oh, did he? Or was he about to do you a favor? Like killing me? It was Luke's money. Luke owed it to Apple. Diane, Luke never had $50 as long as I knew him, much less $500. Get out of here. I don't have to sit here and listen to you saying these things about Luke. You killed him. Isn't that enough? Don't you think the whole town knows it was you who supported Luke? Don't you think they know it was you who fed him, who clothed him, who even gave him his drinking money? And all the time, he didn't even know you were alive? That's not true. Luke was good to me. He loved me. Did he? Do you think Luke was capable of loving anyone, or even of thinking of anyone other than himself? Stop that. I won't listen to you saying such things. I won't listen to you. Here, I won't listen. Diane, you know that what I'm saying is the truth. I wonder you're going to have to face that truth. Where's the boy? Right here, Cartwright. It's easy to lie about a man when he's dead and can't talk back, isn't it? Todd, put away that gun. I'll put it away after I kill you. And this time, I'm not going to miss. This time, I got bullets in the gun. Todd, don't wait. Todd, stop! He killed my father. You're forgetting that? No, I'm not forgetting. But everything he said about your father was true. No, it's a pack of lies. No, it wasn't a pack of lies. 
Look, I knew your father better than anyone in the whole world. He wasn't any good. Just like Ben Cartwright said. He was no good. No, you're lying. He, he sent me money. He wanted me to come out here and live with him. He never sent you a dime. Every honest dollar that Luke got, he drank faster than he could walk to the post office. That $500 that I gave to Affleck was mine. The money. The check that you got every month to keep you in school. That was mine. Even the money that you were sent to bring you back here to Virginia City was mine. See, I thought if he, if he saw his own son, that that would help him straighten out. It couldn't be if... He was so bad. Why would you? Why did I stick to him? Because I loved him. I loved him from the first moment I saw him. <laughs> you bet the gun, boy. Trying to remember him the way I wanted him to be. He was such a wonderful man. Such a rotten, lousy, stinking, wonderful man. Charlie just told us what happened. Yeah, I'm all right, Hoss. That boy, uh, he's going to be all right now, too. I'm still going to have to take him in, Ben. He stole a gun. Did he, Roy? An empty gun. Now, what do you think that would be worth? The lives of two people? I guess it ain't worth a thing, Ben. Oh, Roy, uh... In case you happen to think about it, that uh, horse of ours, the boy didn't steal it. I just gave it to him. Isn't that right, Hoss? Yes, sir. That's right. Roy, you, you tell him to ride him out and pay us a visit. And tell him to bring his new ma. Mm -hmm. 